Hey, good morning. Here we are, a beautiful Hawaiian morning. The birds are singing and uh, we are harvesting banana flowers. So, we come out early in the morning because while the dew is still on the plant, the microbial activity is really kind of at the peak that it will be um, during the day. So, while it's dark still or before the sun fully rises, um, everything that's going on in all this water um, is really what we want to uh, harvest and uh, bring to our trees or our plants that we use that potato. So, we got a lot of banana flowers to harvest, so let's get to it. The production of the banana isn't hindered because as you can see we're taking the banana flower after it's already finished putting out all the bananas it's going to put in. So this is uh, not really a uh, change in production at all um, and possibly even a, an aid to uh, the energy all going into the banana. So here we have it's not a banana flower, it's the whole banana bunch. And if you're at a huge patch and you don't, aren't gonna miss a little production, you can use this whole thing. Just make sure if you do whack this down that you chop the whole tree because that's how you tend to bananas. You want this tree down so the banana grove isn't focusing on this tree that's not gonna again produce fruit. So, whack down the bunch, and then we'll whack down the tree. Now that we've harvested, we want to get these back and make SBJ with them as soon as possible. We don't want to wait till tomorrow because the vibrancy of the plant on the tree is uh, really what we want to capture and preserve. So we've just finished our banana flower harvest, going back to the lab to uh, cut up some banana flowers and make them SBJ. But uh, this is what it looks like when you're out early in the morning picking banana flowers. Taking their finished chopping, leaving an empty bucket. Come over here and weigh it. I've, my scale's been zeroed out for my bucket, so I don't have to try and think about it every time. I have five pounds to toss that in. And every time I do that, just so I don't have to try and remember, I'm going to toss in about five pounds of brown sugar, too. Or however much I've weighed otherwise I'll forget 
and then we'll go get the other bucket. Weigh that. Just under five pounds. Throw in about five pounds. Turn on the mixer, and voila! Dump it in, that's why we have the pallets propping up the mixer so it goes straight into our fermented barrel. All right, so once we finish an entire jug or container full of um, ready mixed um, FPJ or plant material and sugar, then we need to cap it. This is our brown sugar cap, and there's a lot of reasons for this, but take it from me, an important step. So I throw the brown sugar in there, spread it out, and pat it down. Sometimes if you feel like your material has a lot of kind of air trapped in it, you could put a weight on this. So a rock that's not super dirty and nasty, but um, you can put that on to kind of help push out the air bubbles. But um, this material, because it already has kind of a weight, um, doesn't seem to need it, the banana flower. So put my cap, now we're gonna cover it with the cloth. We don't want the cloth to be in the sugar because then uh, anything searching around on the outside is going to find sugar. So I'm gonna slide this over next to the other one. So we did it. We finished 400 plus pounds of banana flour and sugar. Will turn out to be approximately 60 plus gallons of FPJ. And it was a job. So we're cleaning up, washing things down, and uh, yeah, it was a great work day. Today is FPJ extraction day for commercial scale or large scale farming. So we're gonna extract about 60 gallons, maybe 50 gallons of FPJ, and I'm gonna show you how it all works. So this is what I use for extracting. It's a cone bottom tank with a spigot, and I'll put a strainer hooped over uh, my hook here, and um, we're going to pour our FPJ in. The cone bottom will actually enable the solids to get pushed together and uh, the liquids to come out easily. And uh, so this is our, our workspace for this process. We got two of the tanks um, and we'll just be going and going extracting. And then we're gonna make some vinegar in one of our big 300 gallon HDPE tanks um, afterwards. So I'll show you how to do that. So making FPJ, you need strainers. And for large scale, I'll show you a couple of what I use. Um, you can get this at any local hardware store. It's just a five gallon paint strainer. They're made to be disposable, so they sell them for like a dollar. Um, they also make a mesh bag that comes in a two pack or something um, that's maybe a dollar or two. And those are great, real fine mesh and perfect for FPJ. Um, this is just a, um, UV stable mesh I use for some other things. And all I did is gather the corners and then I loop it over my spout and um, 
it becomes a really great and easy to use strainer. Easy to clean, doesn't get clogged because you can move it around. So a couple of things I use, um, you're gonna find out what works for you, but these are helpful. To <laughs> All right, so we're getting ready to pour in our FPJ. Here's our five gallon paint strainer and uh, that'll fill up the bucket, then we'll swap out the buckets. Me and my friends are getting ready to do 60 gallons FPJ. Yeah, you wanna come see the core, Katie? So this is seven, in its seventh day, all finished. That's the cap we put on the top. And uh, no, I can do the short list. So now, this, the hardest part is the initial dump, which I probably could design better. But once we get that started, it goes pretty easy. So I'll make a bit of a mess, but it's uh, acceptable. So what I do with this is I dig out a little hole for the liquid to flow out so it doesn't get all jammed right away and come out like a FPJ slide. like an FPJ explosion. Alright, is that lid closed? Or I mean that valve closed? Um I'm not sure about this um, thing being strong enough. To get out of All right, you can open the valve and start taking your five gallons. Making a little hole so that when I dump, the whole thing doesn't come out all at once. So with all this effort, one of the most important things is just taking care of how you store it. Because if you do all this effort and then store it where it gets ruined or it's in high sunlight and it kind of keeps going off and kind of degrades the quality. Um, so you definitely want to store in a cool, secure place with a breathable lid and uh, just protect it from the sunlight so that uh, all your work doesn't go for nothing. Right now I am checking on my FPJs. And the thing with FPJ is if you have the wrong ratio of sugar, it'll start going off. Um, it also helps to get out of sunlight, so these guys need to be tucked away. 
which we're going to be doing. There's not really direct sunlight in here, but even the indirect sunlight can kind of get these things uh, active. But if you look at this one, or a lot of these, they're inactive, nothing going on. And then I got just a couple of these that maybe that batch had a little bit more, or maybe it was from the top of the batch and the bottom had more settled sugar. But I got about three of these that are still active. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my sugar funnel. Which is right here. Has a big open mouth. And I'm going to tuck it on here and, and add in some sugar. So now I've got my sugar funnel in place. Tuck it in and I'm just gonna go around and I'm not gonna add a ton. I'm just gonna add a little sugar to each one of my five gallon jugs that seem to be kind of active. Sugar by volume or weight, maybe 16 ounces for these active ones. And um, yeah, all that's gonna do is use up the remaining available water that these microbes are using to kind of do their thing and hopefully kind of trap and, and uh, use up that water and cause them to calm down. Cause the microbes that are kind of causing this to go off to calm down a bit. So cover it back up, careful not to get sugar all over the place so I don't have to do a bunch of cleaning and just um, all I'm doing is tending to the quality of my FPJ. It's a lot of work to make some of this stuff and pretty minor just to uh, make sure it stays high quality. So go around and tend to each one. Looks like I got maybe three or four here out of all of them. So one of them, when I added sugar, is really bubbling. It's gonna make a mess, so I gotta get it out of here. So this is why you wanna make sure you add enough sugar in the process. A little too little sugar, and this is what happens. Just a mess. So, Add a little extra sugar, especially if your material is real. So now all of the ones that did go off have new lids. They've calmed down. I completely wiped them with vinegar around just to make sure that um, no ants or insects come and find them appealing on the outside. Because not only will you create a colony that's just going crazy on your FPJ, but you'll probably create super strong colony of insects because this stuff's so good for them. So you'd have like uh, mutant ninja turtles or something. All right, still going, lots to do on the farm. I'll show you some more. I wanted to show you one more thing about FPJ that I didn't show in the how-to FPJ video, so I figure I'll show you in this little kind of all about what I'm doing. So here we have FPJ, and it's still a bit active for comfort. Um, 
I'm just gonna add more sugar. Um, there's two of them, I'm gonna add more sugar. But I wanted to show you a little trick that um, just in case you have, you made something, say you made some mango or some orange and it just keeps going off. Some of those fruits are just crazy active. And you add sugar and it just keeps using it, keeps kind of bubbling and you don't want it to just blow up bottles. So um, I'm gonna show you a trick. If you have a super active item, grab some vodka. And it's like kicking it in the teeth. Um, it's really kind of calming it down um, by force. What you can do, there's not an exact set amount, but as little as you can add to get the effect of calming down your material, you just pour in that vodka. And uh, what that does is it's just a kind of inhibitor to the microbial activity and that'll just calm that down. So this is five gallons, so I added a good bit there. But um, whatever you need to do, whatever size you have to uh, calm down your material, because you don't want it to keep going off. It'll become alcohol itself and then go to vinegar and you'll kind of lose the quality of your FPJ. So better to add a little vodka than use the whole, lose the whole batch. So that's what we do. If your uh, FPJ is going off and you can't calm it down, Take it in the teeth with some strong alcohol. So, thanks for watching guys, see you later.